Hey guys, welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today, let's make a nice steaming cup of coffee or tea or whatever hot beverage you prefer. So first I'm going to create a project and save my file. Okay, so first let's go ahead and model our cup. I'm just going to drop down a geo node here. We'll call it cup. And I'm going to drop down a sphere geo. Let's make it a polygon mesh. Let's make it really smooth. So let's say like 150 by 150. And let's cut off the top. So I'm going to hold space B, go to my front perspective, click on this cursor here and make sure that I'm selecting my primitives. And I'm going to highlight a good two-fifths of the sphere. Or however, like if you kind of want your cup to curve in at the top, you can do it less. Uh, I'm going to do about there. So once I have these polygons selected, I'm just going to click delete. And that's going to create a blast node here. And that basically just deletes our primitives. Let's go back to our perspective view. And now let's make the bottom of the cup flat. Go back to my front. Now I'm just going to select a little bit of the bottom and go to my scale tool and make this flat. Go back to perspective. I actually kind of want it down, so let's go to our move tool here and move this down just a little bit more. It's looking like a cup already. Um, now let's add a poly extrude to make it thicker. However thick you want your cup to be. And don't forget to output the back as well. Okay, this is looking pretty good to me, but I think I want the top to be smooth instead of flat. So I'm going to select all of these polygons on top. To do that, I'm going to hold Shift and A and just click once. And then you can kind of go around this perimeter. You might, you might have to, yeah, you, you have to click it again halfway while you're holding Shift and A. Go all the way around. And now that I have these polygons selected, I'm going to hit Tab and type in a poly bevel. And you can see that it selected all these primitives for us. And we're just going to smooth this top part out. You only really need to do it just barely, like a 0 0.01. And that'll make this a little more rounded. OK, now let's go ahead and make the handle. To do that, I'm going to the front view. And let's drop down a curve and just start drawing about right there and you can hit enter when you're done and here you can select any points make sure you click right here and go to your points and here you can transform it and make anything smoother this is looking a little janky to me Okay, I'm liking that. Now let's hit the display flag on our line here and go back to our perspective view. And let's drop down a SOP called poly wire. And this is going to extrude our handle. And here you can adjust it. If you want a little bit thinner, you can add more divisions to make it look smoother. Maybe more segments. And let's drop down a merge node so then we can see both the cup and the handle. Let's drop down a smooth on that handle. Let's put down a transform. Let's just bring it in just a little bit. Make this thicker. Mm. 
All right, I think I'm happy with that. We'll leave it there for now. Um, don't worry about it cutting into the cup. We can take care of that with a Boolean node. Let's do that now. So let's wire in our handle. And we're going to go up here to our sphere. Wire that in. And we're going to hit the display flag there. And let's subtract B. We're subtracting the handle from the sphere. So the sphere is cutting into the handle. And now let's wire that into our merge. And if you hold Y, you can cut this tie. So now when we click on the merge, you can see that it's cut off the handle that cuts into the cup. That's looking pretty good to me. Now let's go ahead and drop down a null. and go out of our cup geometry and let's make a simple plate because we are not savages. We do not set our drink directly on the table. Call this plate, drop down a circle, put it on the ZX, let's lower it, go back to my perspective view, my front view, sorry. Let's add a poly extrude. Let's make this bigger. Inset this a little bit more, just so the cup's resting right on there. Let's add some more divisions, nice and smooth. distance okay let's make this plate come up just a little bit Ooh, that goes down a lot doesn't it let's set the distance down just a little bit our plate we have our cup let's just go ahead and drop down a null here we might not ever use these nulls but it's just good practice to make them so we have our plate we have our cup let's go ahead and start creating the steam coming off of the liquid so we'll drop down a geo we'll call this steam source and drop down a circle get a ZX and because the cup size is already one unit this circle should fit right in there unless you made your cup bigger and in that case you can just adjust the uniform scale and depending on how full you want your liquid to be you can transform it on the Y to make it go down and shrink it but I'm liking the level of that fluid right there so let's go up one level and we'll go up to our pyro effects and click on this wispy smoke. And it says, what do you want your source to be? This circle. And press enter. It's going to compute that for you. And we're left right here. And first thing I'm first thing I'm noticing right here is our smoke goes outside of our cup. So I'm going to hurry and hop back into our steam source here. And let's make a transform node and shrink this just a little bit like right there okay all right so when we use the shelf tool houdini made two things for us it made us our dop network you might be familiar with this from the melting chocolate bunny that we did this is for pyro effects so it's a little bit different we have a pyro solver now but the rest is relatively the same as a flip simulation. And it also created this, and 
this pyro import is mostly used for caching purposes, but we'll go into that later. So now that we have our smoke source, if we hit, we'll go to, we'll click on real time and hit play and it will start rising. One thing that you'll notice is this box that increases size with the smoke, but you'll see that the smoke, let's see, like right there, do you see how it cuts off right there? It's not great practice to have that. So if you go to this resize container and in the padding, let's just increase that a little bit. Let's make it like 0.4 and see if that cuts it off or not. Yeah, it's still cutting off. Actually, so let's go to our smoke object. And do you see our box here? When it rises, our box that is increasing stops right there. So we need to increase the size of this. But we can also shrink the size down here because our smoke isn't going to fall and reduce the size around it. And just like the flip simulation we did, it's calculating everything in this space. So the smaller it is, the faster your simulation will be. But as you saw from before, it will cut off if it reaches its boundaries. Cool, no cutoff. Looks good to me. So yeah, this is basically if this brown box you see if it doesn't catch up with the simulation, it can also cut off the simulation. So you just wanna make sure this padding is big enough. So now let's look at the actual pyro solver itself. And this is where we can adjust the look and feel of the steam. So right here, some things I would look at is the viscosity, which will kind of change how thick the steam will look. The cooling rate is how long it takes for it to basically dissipate, like the steam. I want it to look like steam. And for me, this is rising just a little bit too much. So let's increase the cooling rate. Like, let's try 0.7. And guys, a lot of this is just playing around with it and making what looks good to you work. So you're going to adjust the parameter, hit play, see what it looks like. Adjust it a little more, like 7.5, and see what it looks like. That's looking pretty good. Let's increase, let's see what it looks like with the increased viscosity. I might change it back. That's looking pretty good to me, but like I said, just play around with it, hit play, um, maybe brew yourself some tea and see what the steam looks like from there. Another tab that I would look at is the shape because the combustion is for actual flames. You got your color, and you, need, you don't need to worry about these two right now. The shape is what you want to look at. And all of these different things will influence the behavior of the steam. And to see what each one does, you can just hover over it and it will tell you exactly what it does. Cause the smoke to disappear over time. And you got your shredding. Let's see, pushes and pulls the velocity field um, to create streak separation and licks, typical of fire. Sharpening, you know, so just hover over it. And let's go ahead and mark the sharpening, add some turbulence, confinement adds curliness to the simulation, so that might be good. And then you can adjust these values here, or if you wanna go even more in depth, you can go down here and adjust these, get a little more detail on them. Let's just see what this looks like right now. So I'm going to add, let's add a little more randomness to it, and that will be under the turbulence tab here. Let's increase the swirl size, try two. Maybe some little bit more sharpening. Just make sure when you change the turbulence that it doesn't cut off your bounding box. 
see what's kind of stopping right there. I'm going to, let's just make this a little bit bigger. All right, I'm happy with the way that looks like. Looks like a nice cup of steam. Okay, and just like the flip sim we did, the lower your division size, the better it's going to look. But the longer it will take to simulate, the longer it will take for this timeline to load. So let's do it like 0 0.01. And that's going to take quite a long time for it to cache. Yeah, see. All right, for the purposes of this tutorial, let's do like 0 0.05. So it takes a little bit longer to load. You can see that the steam is more defined. So when we're happy with what it looks like, we've adjusted all the parameters to our liking. Let's go up one level to our object level and go back to this pyro import. And it's created two nodes for us. We only really need to worry about this one for now. So let's click the display flag on this. And we're just going to cache it like we did with our fluid sim. So let's just call this like, let's just call this Steam, and we'll save it to our file. And we're back. And depending on how low you made your division size, don't be surprised if this takes upwards of a couple hours. I actually did the division size still pretty high just because I didn't have the patience to wait for it to cache for that long. So let's click on load from disk and now we'll play it without it loading. Make sure everything's good. You probably should have done that before you cash, though. That looks good to me. Let's go up one level. So we have our cup, we have our plate, we have our steam, but we don't have the actual liquid because when we created that circle, it created it into a pyro source, basically. So let's go ahead and drop down a null here, right here at this initial circle out liquid and we're going to put this in its own geometry away from the pyro source so let's drop down a geo and we'll call this liquid and now let's drop down an object merge sop and all this is is hey i want to bring in geometry from a different geometry node so we have our object merge let's click on this button right here and find our seam source and out liquid. And guys, this is the main reason why we create nulls is to reference and pull from other sources into our new sources. Go to out liquid, hit accept. And now we have our circle and that's really all we need to do for that. We'll just apply a shader to that. So we hit Looking good. Let's go ahead and create a table because otherwise it's a ghost cup floating in the air. Geo. Table. I'm just going to create a simple grid. Increase the size a little bit. Go ahead and make this lower. enough what else let's make a background also make this two by two out where I want my placement to be. Make sure we can see the steam. Looks good. So we have our table, our background. Let's make a light. I just did an environment light. Go to my HDR. Light. 
got our light and a camera. Just hold, go ahead and hold control and click on your camera and that will automatically place it where your viewport camera is or you can adjust it yourself. So now let's apply some shaders because everything's just gray right now. Click on our render view. So let's go to our material palette here. I'm going to create a background, probably something so I can see our steam a little bit better, something darker maybe. Just I just clicked and dragged that and dropped it onto the background here. Let's make it dark. And we'll make our table and for this I'm going to use a texture just go ahead and drag that onto the table I just did like a wood texture let's see if we can see it a little bit better like a wood grained texture um, oh let's make the cup and the plate they are Houdini already has a white porcelain let's just drag that onto our plate and onto our cup and here you can change the color let's do like a blue make our coffee like a dark brown you can actually apply shaders to your pyro source it might be easier for you to assign this on the geometry node so let's go ahead and call this coffee or you can name it T or whatever you want your fluid to look like go to our object level and go to our liquid and here at the render tab, you can assign the material here instead of clicking and dragging. It might be easier to do it this way. Or you can also disable the display flag on your steam source and click and drag it that way. And that will automatically apply it right there. Back to our material. And let's make this translucent. Because it's a liquid. Like point so like point nine. Looking pretty good. Already I'm noticing that our rendered view looks a little dark, so I'm going to go ahead and cre increase the light. Let's make it two. There we go. That's looking brighter see what that looks like also another tip is when it's rendering you can left click and hold on a certain square you want it to prioritize and it will start rendering this square or whatever square that you're holding first all right that's starting to look pretty good let's see what this steam looks like all right guys and there you have it like I mentioned before you can assign a shader to the steam. I'm liking the look of it already, but if you were to go that route, you might want to go down here to Wispy Smoke and assign that to your pyro import. If you remember, this is where it's cached. Go to our render view and go to our Wispy Smoke. And it's going to be darker because it thinks it's uh, smoke and not steam and you can brighten that up here let's say like 10 oh too much too much and here you can just kind of mess with the density and the shadow let's make it lower because it's steam you can adjust the parameters like the wispiness and all that but like i said i'm just liking the default look of that so i'm going to delete that so we're all good there i 
think that we're ready to render this out. So let's go to our scene view, click on here, go to out. And in the rendering tab, like I said, just hover over it and it will tell you what it does. I mostly focus on the volume quality. Just looking at these real quick, that's the one that I would adjust the most and play around with. But I just like to keep things usually pretty simple and adjust the pixel samples if time is not of the essence. If time is of the essence, like you're on a time crunch and you your boss is wanting you to get this rendered out, maybe adjust the volume quality higher first before you just do the pixel samples. So let's do like a like a 10 by 10 or a 9 by 9 in the rendering engine. I usually just do physically based rendering. And I think you are good to go. All right, guys, and that's how you create a hot cup of liquid with steam coming from it. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or recommendations. Like I say at the end of all my videos, this is how I'm learning Houdini myself is through teaching because that's how I learn the best I've found. So if you have any ways of making this go by smoother or any suggestions, please let me know. And I really appreciate you guys watching. It really encourages me to keep on creating more of these. And thanks for watching. Bye.